the men's 400 metres hurdles. Well, Samba so, so strong in the latter stages. He started this season so, so strongly. Benjamin hasn't run a 400 metres hurdles for over a year, and he's straight into his running here, already eaten up the ground on Thomas Barr down the back straight. Samba likes to go steadily, bides his time, and the eye drawn to the centre of picture there, the tall figure of Afdur Ahmed Samba from Qatar, now starting to get into his groove with 200 to go. We can see there Benjamin with the white headband, with Samba on his shoulder, and as we come into this final straight, it's between these two, as we knew it would be, the second and third fastest of all time. Benjamin, what has he got left? Now Samba comes into his own, starting to stretch away, and Samba, let's look at the top clock, 46.98, remember, was the time in Paris last year. It's not quite as quick as that, but it's another very, very quick time. It's the fastest in the world this year, of course it is, still early stages, but once again, Abdirachmin Samba, Starting 2019 outdoors as he left off in 2018 and Shanghai once again dancing the samba. Well, what a way to kick the evening off. They get top billing, the 400 hurdles often the very first race. And what a race they gave us. Benjamin really taking it to samba as I guess he kind of has to samba. But this I would suggest all about NASA, Wimbley and McLaughlin. McLaughlin, remember, 19 years old, making her debut in Shanghai, in the Diamond League. What a lucky blanket, she said, with her, and her umbrella, anticipating some rain. Thankfully, it's dry. Eid Nasser in four, McLaughlin in six. The women's 400 metres. Lee Nasser was so, so good. It was a fabulous rivalry we saw last year with Shawnee Milowibo. And just that one defeat in Monaco, but some terrific racing. And uh, Eden Nasser, who likes to come strong in the latter stages of the race, is already up on the shoulders of uh, Shakima Wimbley. Sydney McLaughlin as well. This is new territory for her. And it's just so, so silky smooth from Eden Nasser. Also going well on the outside is uh, Sweety Ersetic from uh, Poland. But Eden Nasser starting to move through the gears he is so so metronomic and coming into the uh, final bend here Eid Nasser with Jessica Beard for company also coming strong now Sydney McLaughlin Sydney McLaughlin putting Eid Nasser into some real pressure here but Eid Nasser very controlled and it's gone to form 50 65 the winning time outside the meeting record held by Novlin Williams Mills from a few years ago but once again the diminutive Sawa Eid Nasser from Bahrain coming through with a controlled performance. And the form from last year appears to be there in the early stages of 2019. Sydney McLaughlin, I think that's a really creditable second place for her. Expectations, well, we don't really know, but that, that is good. And that was a great finish there from McLaughlin. She'll be delighted with that. But Nasser takes the victory, 56. 19.76. Men's 200. The grass gets a pretty good start, so does Aaron Brown inside him. Kyle Groves being left a little bit uh, in, uh, inside the two Canadians, but the best bend has been run by Brown. Brown leading this at the moment, also going well on the outside is Munyai, and here comes De Grasse right through the middle, but is he going to catch his teammate? Brown is still holding a metre and a half lead. It's going to be Brown who gets it, 20.08. De Grasse, second place. And to be honest, that's how the race was set after about 50 metres. Very good start from Aaron Brown. De Grasse got out of the blocks well, but the bend was much better from Aaron Brown. Transitioned into the home straight, gave him that metre, metre and a half lead. And then he held it, held it, looked just for a, about 90. We will undoubtedly get another world lead for eight. Ajay Wilson, the 800 metre specialist, uh, has the fastest time in the world so far. 
So Sifan Hassan then be interested to see if she slots right onto the pace as usual. She goes to the back early on, as is her want, and just uh, settles herself in over the first lap. And well, uh, Kiplanga just almost looking. Uh, she's meant to be helping with the pace later, looking round as if to say, "Are we racing yet?" Uh, but so Mitchell's just slotted into the front. Kip Langa on her shoulder. Those are the two pacemakers. And Sifan Hassan happily at the back of the bunch, keeping out of trouble in the early stages. Just tucking in a little bit uh, a little bit more for my liking than uh, she might want to, because she's going to have to come around everybody. And you can see uh, the headband just at the back there, just keeping an eye on things. Bit of Segai starting to build a real reputation from uh, Ethiopia, the former world indoor silver medalist in the uh, first bunch of three or four athletes there very very dangerous indeed one of the real threats to Sifan Hassan but Hassan at the moment keeping well out of trouble well good pace probably um, a little bit slow I don't think Hassan will mind that at this stage of the season the pace is, uh, is always less important I think than getting the win here so Sigai closer Samuel a very good youngster very good talent uh, just uh, on her shoulder as well uh, Rafi not too far away either and uh, Nelly Jepkoskar just uh, tucked in behind them as well. But Sifan Hassan a little bit slow to get moving here. And as I said, with uh, those long races in her legs, be really interested to see what she can produce. But now, just starting to move through, but she's given herself a fair bit of work to do. They come round, when they come round this time, we'll have two laps to go, but she must be two, best part of two seconds off the lead at the moment. Well, a patient performance so far from uh, Sifan Hassan, who's really starting to show herself to be one of the most versatile female athletes on the circuit moving up from 15 to 5,000 meters also excellent on the roads and now just starting to make her way through the field Samuel the tall figure behind Sigai as well so Sigai will be picking up the lead once to go through that's 2-9 through 800 meters so not that quick but look at Hassan you have to look for her she's right at the back just starting to move up on the outside now Seom trying to go with her as well has been watching her but Sigai who can lead can when she's in good shape can take it out remember what she did in Stockholm to Laura Muir last year was a superb win when she ran 357 so she's got a little bit of a lead here when Kip Langat pulls out but the others are starting to close including Hassan who's now effectively in sixth place behind Arafi as they come around with 500 to go Segai still in a great position but Hassan then just having to go wide there coming up onto the shoulder of uh, Chip Kozgai and getting herself into that perfect position from which to pounce the world junior champion Samuel just getting boxed by Hassan there and Sayon moving up as well on the outside has been tracking Hassan every single stride so Sigai, Hassan, Sayom on the outside Samuel trapped on the curb a little bit the youngster and Hassan just letting Sayom just close her off that's unusual Jeff Koska has got in a good position Rafi always dangerous in a kick as well only a 65 lap there so Hassan's going to be tested really tested a Rafi just elbowing her way through with 200 meters to go so it's the two Ethiopians who've raced each other so many times over the years Sigai just getting cut up by a teammate Sayon moves ahead, has a look behind, Arafi is there, Hassan still got a chance, not too far away, Mbai is also moving up. But out in the lead, Sayom, has she got much left? She's looking round everywhere for danger and it's there with Arafi and it's there with Hassan and Jeb Koskai trying to get through. Uh, Nanyando it is, they're moving through on the inside, but it's Arafi with that 800 metre pace is just about going to have enough to take this. Can she hold it to the line? She does. Arafi gets the win. 4-1, Hassan fading in the end, Nanyondo finishing quickly on the inside, but that was a race which I think told us a lot about where Sifan Hassan is now. Normally, in years gone by, she would have easily won that race, but she's training for 5,000, 10,000, she said. I'm, I'm a little surprised that she sat off it, I guess. She just couldn't do much about it. She couldn't really get involved in the race. But you know when the pace... Women's 100 metres. Oh, uh, good start there from uh, Hobbs near the near side and uh, blessing of Barry is getting into a stride here where is Thompson but Okabari is coming through very strongly indeed but picked on the line there by Hobbs 
Hobbs in great form in a Yokohama. And it's Hobbs, the youngster. We mentioned the emerging new generation of sprinters. Well, Elia Hobbs, very much part of that with Henderson, who was just to her right. And in the end, Elia Hobbs coming through in a season's best, 11.03. Okugbari, who was excellent for, what, 70 or 80 metres of that race. Prandini coming home in third. And Elaine Thompson, well, after her disappointing 2018, not a great race from her for the Dublin Olympic champion. But it's USA 1 and 3, Hobbs with the victory, 11.03. Let's talk about her first. Uh, she broke her wrist. Stro the USA goes in three. Wu from China on the inside in lane two. The key men to look out for, Makwala in seven, Curly in five. Meeting record, 43.99, set by Stephen Gardner last year. Well, a real opportunity here for the likes of Fred Curley and uh, Isa McQuala to make a mark in the absence of the talented, the supremely talented Stephen Gardner. And, uh, well, bang on cue, Fred Curley has gone off really nicely in the first... 100 metres or so down the back straight, already up on the shoulder of uh, Taplin and uh, starting to take control of this race really nicely. McQuala, no response so far, and Fred Curley, who was in terrific form, and McQuala's gone. McQuala has gone, not for the first time, and Curley now, surely, into the home straight with this race sewn up. Fred Curley now all about what the time is. Curly with an eye, a nice early season run out in the end, a comfortable win. 44 83. Well, Curly, I'm not sure what he'll make of that victory because Stephen Gardner was lost before the start, as was Akeem Bloomfield. And uh, well, McQuala as well went, but Curly coming through, a nice early season's best for him 44 81. And it's USA 1, 2, and 3 with Cherry in second and Strober down in third. Yeah, one or two athletes getting uh, good points uh, because of the two withdrawals before the race and then McQuala sadly pulling, whether it was cramp or uh, hamstring, obviously we'll find out later. But it, what it meant was that Curly could just concentrate on his own race. Good start from the Olympic champion McLeod in lane four. She is right next to him, but it's McLeod who's got the lead. Shebenkov trying to get back into it, but McLeod has it, just checks back a little bit there. It's going to be tight here, but McLeod just might hang on from Shear. He does so. 13.12. Cracking race from both men. Season's best for McLeod. And as I said, his thoughts may well be elsewhere. But what a win. All of the way, got a good start, just got a slight advantage. Share with a new person best. I said he's a, he's a coming athlete, he's improving all the time, and he just showed there that he could well be a big danger for the rest of this season. And you can see a few tears there from Omar McLeod. And what a way for him to remember loved ones with a victory there. Well, the emotion all coming through. And, of course, the story before this race was all about whether he could win for the fourth time here in Shanghai. He's done that, but it was so much more. And the news just reaching us in the last few hours that he lost a very, very close relative very recently and was in two minds as to whether to compete here in Shanghai this evening. And he will feel that that decision to, to compete The best start, Su Bing Chan right alongside him. Prescott not too far away either, but it's Christian Coleman moving away. Lyles is finishing very, very quickly, and it could be Lyles! Wow, what a finish! From nowhere at 50 metres, he came storming through. I said he might struggle to hang on to them early on, but goodness me, a little like last year when Prescott finished so quickly, Lyles gets it on the line, 9.86, look at him, he's finishing like a train, looking across as well, he didn't dip, well, 
That's the wrong picture. My apologies. Uh, wrong, uh, wrong, uh, wrong event even. Never mind the wrong picture. Coleman looking up. Well, I call Lyles, and it's come up on the computer. He is confirmed. And the first four men, all under 10 seconds. Simbine also finished quickly, got third. Prescott, good run from him, 9.97 in fourth place. But what about Noah Lyles? I said in that relay, you know, he finished quickly, but there was some bad changeovers in. It's quite hard to see what that means. But 9.86, of course, the quickest in the world this year beating Christian Coleman after giving him a, a pretty much a head start. Brilliant performance from Noel Isles. Coleman second, Simbine third, Prescott fourth. Wow, just wow. Terrific performance from Niles. We know about him in the 200 metres, his favourite event. But that is a massive personal best for him. We knew he'd been in good form. And wow, let's look at it again. Coleman well away. And at this stage, you think Lyles really has got so much to do, separated by Sue in the middle there. But look at the finish, getting better and better, faster and faster. And it is a rerun, wasn't it, of last year when it was Reese Prescott who came through from late eight in the driving rain. This year, it's Lyles through the middle, who pips Coleman, his teammate, on the line, went down to the thousand. Both from the same country. From the same country. Almost looked like a false start from Bramson, but he got away nice and sharply off the line. And you saw that meeting record there, just under 13 minutes. So if they do get good pace, I suspect it, they'll set off a decent pace. It's just how much it slips in the middle and then when the race really gets going over in the last thousand or whether Kajelcha is just going to be happy to use his speed, use his kick, which he, we know he can do to very, very good effect. So tall Ethiopian just settling down as some takes them through the first 200 in just outside 30 seconds really looking forward to seeing uh, Kajelcha doing battle again with uh, Barrega the two Ethiopians such a, a contrast in style Kajelcha of course the the tall willowy figure there he is just left of picture Barrega slightly more compact but so so deadly worth reminding ourselves he's still only 19 years old took silver indoors of course in Birmingham last year but what a final it was in in Brussels at the end of last year well he's quite metronomic this guy I, I always uh, I think he's one of the best pacemakers so if you want to run 235 for the first kilometer you go through in 62 seconds and I reckon he was within a tenth of that um, in fact, it's just come up on the screen, 61.9. That is very, very good pace. Mate. Check the guy just moving up a little bit as well. Kajelcha and Borrega just five metres apart from each other, further back. There they are. And so they were a good second or more, almost two seconds down on the leader. That might give us an indication of their intention here. They won't mind at all that the field's getting nicely strung out, not too much bunching, so there's good pace early on to make sure that no chance of any, um, well, I hope anyway, no chance of any little slip-ups. Look how well stretched out they are. Indian file, as we call it. There is Cheptegai, just a left of picture. And as Steve was saying, terrific performance in Aarhus in Denmark in the World Cross Country. Let's just dip into the uh, early stages of the men's high jump. There is Wang. Yes. Comes into this competition with such high expectations. And of course, this stadium so, so reminiscent and uh, linked with the great Liu Jiang, of course, the hurdler. We'll be seeing the high hurdlers in action later on this evening. And they're a first time clearance at 225 for. Wang Yu, and he takes an early lead. Nela Sakao, second attempt. A little bit of a struggle for many of the high jumpers. We've seen the return of Bondarenko here after missing all of last year. Knee surgery for him. Be interested to see how he can contend. And a decent second clearance there. Yeah, Bondarenko. Uh, amongst a bunch of athletes really who've been uh, making their comebacks or looking to make their comeback of course Olympic year next year so the first thousand meters pace being set 
very, very well by some and then uh, dropped out 235.2. Do you know if uh, you get asked to do 235? <laughs> Uh, it's spot on. So it's Kiplagat who's got to try and take it on. I wasn't sure how much further Som would get than the 1,000 metres, and, but he did his job very well. So it's just dropped a little bit the pace, but they're still very, very well stretched out. Uh, Kajelcha a little bit closer. Borrega not too far away from him. It's Gebriwet really in Chilimo, the two big names who are closest to the pace at the front. So they look like they're ready for this. Chilimo runs for the US, of course. And done so well in the major championships in uh, 16 and 17. This chapter guy. I was talking about you know, the, the it's a, it's such a big year in terms of uh, you know world championships. But we've had the world if you're a distance runner, you have the world cross country championships as well. We've got the world championships really late in the year in, in late September and, and into October. So you've got a situation where you, you're planning your year really carefully. You have to plan. So of course, Kajalcha chose to run those fast indoor races, then I, I presume he's probably had a little bit of a break coming in early in the season, and, but it's a long, it's a long schlep, as we'd say, from here through to September, October, to keep himself in really good shape. So I'm, I'm not sure that Kajelcha is really looking for a super fast time here. I think get his season off to a good start, uh, win against a very, very good field here, but they're not letting him hang around. Back to the high jump, Jason Robinson. Yes, nicely over. Jerome Robinson, excellent technique. We should also mention, of course, Mutaz uh, Bashim from Qatar, who will be hopefully fit to take part in the, the World Championships later this year in Doha. Jerome Robinson then, also clear at 2.25. Brandon Stark, Commonwealth Games champion. Great speed, really attacks the bar and gets the result, gets the reward. Won the Diamond Trophy, of course, last year. Some terrifically consistent jumping. Second in the Continental Cup. So he had a good year in 2018, did uh, Brandon Stark. And there he's off to an excellent start here. First time over 225. Well, by contrast, Ivanyuk here in a bit of trouble. This final attempt at 225 oh yes gave it a bit of a tickle on the way over living dangerously Ivanyuk but Ilya Ivanyuk an authorized neutral athlete is clear at 225 and joins Duron Robinson and uh, Brandon Stark two thousand meters 5.13, pace just dropped a little bit, still not too far off 13 minute pace though, And uh, but what it did mean was that nobody's able to keep the pace going to 3,000 metres, Kiplagat having to pick up a little bit early, he only got them to about 2,400 metres, and so Gebrewet now finds himself in the lead, so it's Gebrewet just slowing now, you can see all the field bunched up, the 65, and almost a 66 second lap there, so after that initial stretching out with a good Fast early pace, the big names sat off it, Kajelcha and Berega, Cheptegai, it was Chilimo and Gebruet who were right at the front, but they've had to slow now. So now we're back into, I think, the sort of race we were probably expecting, that nobody, I don't think anyone really wants to run you know, 12.50 at this stage of the season, but they, the winning is so important here. So Berega's not liking the fact it's gone too slow, he knows the danger that Kajelcha possesses in terms of his great pace. So Berega, early for me, very early, decides to get things moving again after that slow lap. Yeah, there's only so much that uh, people like Berega can take and uh, a little bit of impatience you sense there from him and just taking matters into his uh, own hands and there, Kajelcha just covering the move as you would expect, just slipping into the slipstream in second place. But it's steady, isn't it? It's a steady tempo. It's an er early season type of tempo with this season so, so long. Well, at 2.41k there, you know, it's still pretty good pace. You know, that's not bad pace at all. And given that we expect it to be fast at the end, so, you know, they're still going to be heading for low 13 minutes, I, pr I presume. I'm, I'm interested in the fact that, you know, this is, this is a bit of a rehearsal, really, for what... You, when you start in the major championships, how does Berega beat Kajelcha? You know, how does he... Or how do any of them contend with 
his ability to run, you know, he's got such good 1500 meter mile pace now. Um, you know, they're going to be thinking he's in that Mo Farah ill because you know, if he's around in the last six, 700 meters, it'll be really hard to hold off. So, is this his first little rehearsal, if you like, for what maybe to come later in the year? Is this, would this be a tactic for him? He's no slouch, uh, Berega, but I don't think he quite possesses the same sort of pace as Kajelcha. But at the moment, well, Gajal then in the high jump. Nice, really silkily smooth from Gajal. Ajedin Gajal, 32 years old now. Bronze medalist from London 2017. This uh, high jump competition starting to come to life here. Wang we've seen over 225, there is a third time clearance at 225, so one or two of these jumpers living a little bit dangerously. There is the competition leader, Bar now at 228, and of course the home crowd needing no second invitation to get involved here. View we've already seen deliver in the women's javelin, we've got Gung Li Zhao going in the women's shot put, and here is Wang, Wang Yu, in the men's high jump. The bar at 228. Oh, yes, that's nice. And the crowd comes alive, and you sense that will not be the first time this evening in this wonderful, wonderful stadium, the Shanghai Stadium. Terrific atmosphere, lovely conditions, actually. It's been a little bit wet and cool in the last few days, but conditions pretty good here this evening. 228 then, Wang extends his lead a little bit of a change at the front of the 5,000 meters and it's the world cross-country champion chapter guy who's decided to push things on a little bit Borrego was at the front wasn't really doing too much Gabri wet there Balu just moving again around the outside trying to get back into what was a decent position he was in another 242 that's the slowest kilometer of the race through 4k and uh, now we're going to see things move on a little bit. Kameli, the youngster, tries to push on. Gabri Wett is right there, check to Guy. And then a little bit further back. Kajelcha just watching and waiting, keeping himself clear of any bother, clear of any trouble. Borega's just on his inside, boxed a little bit at this point. As they come round with two laps to go. That's a 62.8 and surely it's got to start winding up. Well, it's a question of who will run out of patience. We've already seen Borrega take a chance at the front. Kajelcha just exactly where he wants to be. And for me, his finishing speed has improved since his move to the United States, working with uh, Alberto Salazar, really much improved. But uh, all the main protagonists still in there. Gebri, where we can see, centre of picture. Kajelcha just looks her, uh, <laughs> tries to look over his shoulder. Borrega's tucked right in behind him. But he's where all oh, it's gone. Was that Borrega who went? Not quite sure who it was. No, it wasn't Borrega. We'll just try and check who was that was who fell. It might have been. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Kajelcha was looking. It wasn't Borrega. Borrega's still tucked in there behind him. But they're coming around now. No one's really making the big moves. And Gebri Wett just trying to hold the curb there. Kajelcha watching and waiting. And Gebri Wett just slips past him. And then Kajelcha, then Borrega. Balu still in there with a chance as well, a 62. They still haven't really got firing here. Six or seven men in with a decent chance. Chapter guy trying to hang in there at the back of this group as they start to motor. Gebri Wett trying to hold the curb with Kajelcha making his big move around the outside. Borrega trying to follow, Balu on the inside. And Gebri Wett has to give way. Borrega's giving chase, trying to hang on to the long stride of Kajelcha. 200 metres to go. A little look on his inside. The danger is still there. The two big men pulling away. Has Borrega got enough to try and haul him in? Kajelcha flat out now. Into the home straight, just a metre and a half between them. Borrega trying to attack on the outside. Balu finishing quickly for third, but Kajelcha starts to pull away. Kajelcha's going to take the win. Kajelcha wins. Borrega second. Gebriwet came back for third, just I think in the end. A world leading time of 13 minutes and four. A few seconds, half a dozen seconds quicker than Kajelcha ran in the United States a couple of weeks ago.
What a 53 last lap. And I think if Perega didn't already know, he's quick, he's good, but he's not as quick as Kajelcha. And what he certainly can't do is give Kajelcha the lead out. Let him go. He likes a nice 300 meter lead out. Out in front. Once he gets those long legs going, it's really hard to reel him back. 17. When Chesbolt lost her shoe, put it back on and still came home to win. Well, away they go. And uh, Beatrice Chepkoic with this extraordinary record in the 3,000 metres steeplechase. Five times she's run sub nine. There have only been 12 in history. And Chepkoic has run five of them. And she ran on the flat, didn't she, in Doha, where Steve and I were a couple of weeks ago. That was a, a decent opening for the season for Chepkoic. But, uh, Steve, I would suggest, not sure if you agree, but Chepkoic, the target here, and it's all about whether the youngsters can make any inroads. Yeah, and she's had a busy winter already, Chepkoic, you know, across uh, the various disciplines, if you like. And, yeah, it was, it was a pretty good performance. Obviously, you, know, you had Ellen Beer in Barber there last, last week. So I'll be interested to see whether she wants to really take this on here. They've, they've, you know, they've been asked to go out and sort of bit inside nine minute pace um, so that obviously would suggest that they, they you know, whether that they, she's asked for that or not I'm not too sure so she's not um, getting too involved at the moment and chess ball is a massive danger as you said you know really an athlete who I think has got a massive amount of improvement still to come but yeah we'll uh, be, we'll know a little bit more after this well, nine-minute pace, the magic nine-minute mark equates to uh, 72 seconds per lap. So they've been asked to go in uh, just inside that, going through the first kilometre in just under three minutes, three minutes per K, of course. So the math's nice and simple for us. Of course, the, uh, the water jump to be negotiated. But uh, Chespol, a real, real threat. There is uh, one of the pacemakers, uh, Gürkes, who's... Uh, going to take them through just under three minutes for the first kilometre. There is Chesbolt with the trademark instantly recognisable shaven head. And Chip Kovic will know all about her. Yeah, when, you, when you're setting the pace at that, you know, she ran a 71st lap. You can see what the others are doing. They're just waiting and, and watching. Let's quickly look at the long jump. This is Zhang, 788, his best so far, final round. Well, that will be a, an improvement, but I don't think it's going to trouble the top three. Only three men over eight metres. Uh, Tajay Gale getting close, that personal best. He set earlier in the year already, 8.24 leading. 8.16 for J uh, Wang Jianan. And then Samai in third, eight metres four. This one for Zhang will improve matters. Four of his attempts have been no jumps, just one valid effort, 7.88 in round three. That's better, 7.98 moves him up into fourth place. Well, approaching the first kilometre, and the pacemaker doing her job. It's uh, Chepkoic who is going with them. There is uh, Beatrice Chepkoic, the, the reigning world record holder, 3.01.9. So uh, outside the required pace, but uh, still plenty of chance to to speed this up, but Chepkoic with the uh, the pressure on her shoulders, if you like, but so much talent, it's stacked behind her. The likes of Mercy Chepkarui, 18 years old, Fancy Chirono, we should mention her as well, just 17. We've talked about Chesbolt, the pick of them, only just turned 20. And, uh, well, it was a thrilling race, wasn't it, back in Monaco last summer. There is Twigong, the second pacemaker. She's going to take them through, she hopes, two kilometres just inside six minutes. The issue now for Chep Koic is when the pacemaker drops, how far does she go? Because you can just see chess balls closing in now. And if I was Chep Koic, if I felt OK, and she looks like she's right on the back of the pacemaker, I'd, I'd, it, the pace is dropping. She needs to go past the pacemaker now and maintain that gap because if chess ball gets onto her and it keeps slowing, then you've got a different race. She's just got an opportunity here, which she's got to either take it or she's going to find she's got everybody for company as we enter the latter stages here. But she looks as though... Um, the pace, as it's been dropping, is still, I wouldn't say it's a struggle for her, but she's not able to, to move on. And as you can see there, chess ball very quickly is going to be on her shoulder. Well, lurking ominously, and uh, she made really light work in Eugene. That was the, the big race, really, on the Diamond League circuit when she announced herself to the, the wider world. 
Cheng. Once more in the javelin. Good javelin competition. Hoffman leading from the first round. 87-55. Cheng, 87-12 in round three. The Asian champion. Most of his best competitions, you have to say, over the years have been in Asia. And that one's tailed off there. Um, you know, he, he, what he'll want to do is try and find an opportunity to get more experience against these top European throwers, the Germans in particular. Roller not going quite so well here tonight. Vetter with that tendon problem pulling out just last week. Uh, but Hoffman still leading. 87-12 keeps Cheng in second place. 83-76 there. Well, the pacemaker is gone, and it's Chepkoic with chest fault in her wing mirrors here, approaching two kilometers. Chepkoic then the world record holder, chess ball the world junior champion twice over. There is uh, Chep Karui in third place. Chemutai, I should say, from Uganda in third place. And that gap starting to widen. And although the pacemaker has gone, I think that uh, Chepkoic has maybe taken heed of what Steve was suggesting, that maybe she needs to just put her foot on the gas a little bit more. 1,800 meters through 526. And that gap for me, Steve, is getting wider and wider. Yeah, and you know, it's easy for me to say it, but she must have sensed it. So looking up at the big screen, you know, when you've got a gap and you're feeling OK, why on earth let the likes of chess ball get back? You know, it's chess ball's fault. Uh, either she's not, you know, not running well enough, but she had to work so hard to try and get back to Chepkoic. So Chepkoic now with another three minutes one for that uh, kilometre has now given herself the, that lead. Chess ball will have to work really, really hard to close that down unless Chepkoic falls apart, which uh, on the evidence of what we're seeing so far is not going to happen. So she's done the right thing here. It's can she be strong enough over the last two laps? 6.03 through two kilometres, so into the final third of the race. And it's worth reiterating, we're watching here two of the three fastest 3,000 metre steeplechasers of all time. The world record holder, Beatrice Chepkoic, leading the way. Chess ball who's got the third fastest time. We should include Ruth Chebet, of course, who's, uh, well, facing allegations of doping, and uh, we'll find out perhaps in the next few months what happens to her. But really, the two outstanding steeplechasers in action here in Shanghai. And Chess Bolt has to make sure that Chep Koech doesn't get too far away. Chep Koech running a very mature race here. Yeah, Chep Koech still looks very much in control, doesn't she? Chess Ball not able to close that gap any further. She got within about five metres. Chep Koech sensed the danger, picked the pace up because it had slowed with uh, while Twigon was there. But for now, Chep Koech, if anything, looks to be extending this with 600 metres to go. Neither of them look <laughs> anywhere like the sort of 845, 850 shape uh, at this point. And they're going to be heading for something outside nine minutes. But Chess Ball uh, is having to just watch Chep Koech at this point as they come round this time to take the bell. Well, Chep Koech, older by seven years, 27 years old against the youngster of 20, but don't underestimate the talent and the future that Chess Ball has got. The meeting record no, worth no, mentioning, no, 9.04 by Ruth uh, Chebet as we hit the bell at uh, a smidgen under eight minutes. So Chep Koech on her way to yet another victory here. It won't be sub nine, but... Uh, Chess Bolt in pursuit, these two well, well clear of the rest of the field. So it's going to be Kenya 1, Kenya 2, and uh, Beatrice Chepkoic untroubled here as soon as she decided to make hay while the sun shone in uh, Shanghai. So Chepkoic, the world record holder, into the last 250 metres, and that gap is now just shy of, what, 25 metres. And barring any major, major upset, it'll be Chepkoic who comes home Victorious Chess Bolt, pretty comfortable in second place, the youngster. And Chip Koic now can just stroll to victory, all about getting the points early on. It's a long old season, there's no real point in stretching herself and putting herself under too much pressure, undue demands. She's got about, think about the World Championships in Doha in still four months' time. The final barrier is negotiated. So Beatrice Chip Koic who was uh, victorious so supremely in 2018, starts here over the jumps with 9.04. It's just outside, or is it just inside the meeting record? It is a new meeting record, just by the slightest of margins. So a meeting record for Beatrice Chipkoic. Chess ball comes home in second place, and uh, Perut Chimutai from Uganda takes third. It's a world lead as well. Don't take too much notice of that. 
an untroubled, pretty uneventful Steve women's 3,000 metres steeplechase, but victory for Chep Kowicz, the world record holder, and second place for the youngster, the world junior champion, Selafin Chespol. Well, if you looked at the results and you saw the splits of 3, 1.8, 3, 1.6, 3, 1.1, you'd go, well, that's a nice, easy, even pace race. Didn't tell the whole story. I think there was a period in the middle where, you know, Chep Kovac had gone out harder. It